Over the course of their long evolution, flowering plants have devised all sorts of ways uh, to maximise or to increase the chances of cross-pollination. One of the most effective is to have two forms of the flower on different plants which can only pollinate and fertilise each other because of the different positions of the style and stigma and the stamens in the two forms of the flower. The most familiar example of this dimorphic arrangement is in primrose, which we examined earlier in the year. But purple loosestrife takes this one step further, because in purple loosestrife there are three forms of the flower, any one of which can only be pollinated and fertilised by either of the other two. Now this is a wonderful field of purple loosestrife on an old uh, spread ground in an area from which turf has been cut a couple of years back. And all the flowers look alike, the plants all look alike. Uh, even if you look at them rather closely you can see they all have uh, a corolla of five petals. Uh, they all have a style and stigma. Each of them has 12 stamens in two groups of six. But the positions of the style and stigma and the two groups of stamens are different in the three forms of the flower. If we take a closer look at the flowers now, uh, and we can do this on any one of the three forms, uh, we can see that there's a corolla of five, occasionally six petals, uh, slightly zygomorphic and held at a slight angle to the main axis. An important detail is that the base of the petal is very slender. Now that means that uh, it can't take the weight of a bee, so when the bee visits the flower it's going to land in the centre of the flower. And if you look more closely you can see that the stamens and the stigma are inclined slightly upwards which means that when the bee lands on the centre of the flower, it is the underside of the insect that is going to be dusted with pollen, and it is from the underside of the bee that pollen will be deposited on the stigma. This trimorphic strategy of purple loosestrife was first discovered and described by Charles Darwin in 1877. And for that study, Darwin produced a diagram which might be a good way for us to begin our own investigation. So this is Darwin's famous diagram of the three forms of the flower in purple loosestrife. And you can see that in any one of the three forms there are three positions that can be occupied by the style and stigma or by the two groups of six stamens. If we look at the style and stigma, you'll see that there's a long styled form there is an intermediate styled form and there is a short styled form and in each of the three forms of the flower the two groups of stamens occupy the other two positions that are available to them. And you can see that the arrows indicate from where the pollen must come to fertilise each of the three stigmas. There's the short styled one with the two groups of pollen from the other two flowers, intermediate styled form, you'll see the same, only intermediate stamens and in the long styled form uh, pollen must come from either of the two forms of the flower which have the anthers in the long positions. Now how that works is this. When an insect visits the flowers uh, the pollen will be deposited on different parts of its body depending on which form it's visiting. If it's visiting a flower which has the anthers in the long positions, the pollen will be deposited on the abdomen and on the inside of the back legs. If it's visiting anthers which are in the intermediate position, the pollen will be deposited on the thorax and between the front legs. And if it is visiting flowers where the anthers are in the short positions, the pollen will be deposited on the insect's proboscis and chin. And when that insect subsequently visits other flowers, the pollen from those positions are most likely to be deposited on the stigma in the corresponding position of the flower it's visiting.
So now let's take a look at the flowers themselves. Uh, but do remember, this is just a pointer in the right direction. You should get out to look at the flowers yourself and look for these features. You can very easily see and distinguish the long pin-like style and stigma at the front there. And you can see the six intermediate stamens at the entrance to the calyx tube. The six short stamens are inside the tube, so you would have to dissect the flower out to see those clearly. In this flower, the style is in the intermediate position. You can see the six long stamens extending way to the front. And you can just about make out the anthers, the yellow anthers of one, of one or two of the short stamens at the entrance to the calyx tube. And notice that slight upward curl of the stamens and of the stigma. Finally, this is the short style form. Here you have the six long stamens with their green anthers, six stamens in the intermediate position with the yellow anthers, and you can just about glimpse deep in the calyx tube the pin of the stigma. Purple loosestrife is pollinated by long-tongued insects, particularly bees, hoverflies and butterflies. But a wide variety of other insects also feed on the plant, particularly several beetle species which exert a, a significant control on the pop population, on the size of the population. In parts of the world to which the plant has been introduced, and notably New Zealand and parts of North America, purple loosestrife is, is seriously invasive and can sometimes cover large swathes of countryside uh, where it's very difficult and very expensive to control either by physical or by chemical means. But uh, where these beetles have been introduced, they're proving to be a, a, a very effective method of biological control. Purple loosestrife had a wide variety of uses in the past, particularly in herbal medicine, but a more unusual use was the custom of tying bunches of the plant around the necks of horses or oxen in order to control them and keep them calm. And this is, this is a use which goes back a long way because it is described in one of the volumes of Pliny the Elder's Natural History, which was written in the first century AD, where he tells us that purple loosestrife is so powerful in its effects that if placed upon the yoke of oxen, of inharmonious oxen, uh, it will exert uh, a controlling effect on their irritability. <laughs>